कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की In the news tonight, some USP courses in doubt. Ratu Isoa ordered to pay AG for defamation. And Fiji could receive COVID-19 vaccines next month. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nair. Bulamanaka Fiji, there are certain courses previously offered by the University of the South Pacific in doubt for this year. Acting Vice Chancellor and President of the University, Dr. Julio Paunga, indicated some courses may be dropped. Apenisa Wangairandovu reporting fr rather reports fronting the media for the first time since taking up the position. Dr. Paunga says they are struggling to retain all the courses. The USP Acting Vice Chancellor says they are looking at the viability of some courses and also areas to make savings to deliver. Uh, we are trying our best, I mean, to make sure that all the courses here, I mean, continue the um, reputation of the university and make sure that the courses um, are credited just to help out with those that are coming into the, um, to study at the University of South Pacific. Dr. Ponga has also indicated doubts, saying the availability of courses will depend on enrollments and the interest of the students. There have been mixed reactions from students regarding the statement by the acting VC. I don't think it's fair because uh, when the courses are not available, the students have to wait uh, another semester to take it. So. Uh, I think that uh, it's very arguable. It is a good idea and it is a bad idea. For some students who don't, uh, who don't want the course, they will think it's a good idea because they will be getting the courses. But for people, uh, for students who, are, who want that course and not getting, so they have to go somewhere else. I think that's, uh, that's not a very good idea. As many students want to study a particular course, but it would be a disadvantage if it is not available to them. Dr. Ponga has also admitted they are dealing with internal issues whereby some staff have been suspended. For anything uh, regarding the staff, um, we cannot comment on that because any of those are uh, regarding the staff uh, policies. Their confidential matters. Very recently, three staff from the university were reportedly suspended, and reliable sources say the three were allegedly leaking confidential information to the public. Apenisa Wangarandovu, FBC News. And we now join Apenisa live. Apenisa, what else did the acting VC say about enrollment and courses this year? Edwin, the acting vice chancellor has also said that not all students from across the region have made it back into the country. Dr. Paunga has also said that uh, due to travel restrictions that are in place because of COVID-19, most of these students have opted to stay back in their respective countries and attend the campuses that are based over there. Also, Edwin, the, 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 he also says that this is also why they are looking at the enrollment also to consider the courses that they will be taking or offering in these various campuses. Also, Edwin, here at the Lodala Bay campus in Suva, a new course will be offered, which is the Human Rights Defenders course. Already, there are over 30 students who have shown interest in taking up the course. Edwin. Naka Penisa. Former Sodelpa MP Ratu Isua Tikoda has been ordered to pay Attorney General ASA at Kayum $80,000 in defamation costs. The ruling was handed down by the Suva High Court this morning. Sayed Kayum had sued Ratu Isua for comments to a Sydney community radio station, which was later posted on the Fiji Exposed Forum Facebook page. Pranita, Pranita Prakash reports. The court heard that in about January or February 2018, in the interview, Ratu Isoa spoke in the Itoke language and made statements against Sayed Kayum. The former Sodelpa MP had claimed that the AG was engaging in devious schemes, criminal and illegal acts, and that he was engaged in discrimination and racism. The High Court ruled that the allegations were serious in nature, and Ratu Isoa does not have any license or freedom to make such claims unless they are true in nature and justifiable on very strong grounds. It also stated that defamatory material was addressed to listeners on a popular radio station and would have come to the notice of a very large number of people. The court ruled the broadcast was designed to cause widespread damage to the Attorney General. The High Court ruling states Ratu Isua's statement caused substantial damage to Sayed Kayum's reputation 
In his capacity as the Member of Parliament, Minister for Economy and the Attorney General. Apart from the $80,000, the former politician has been ordered to write a public retraction and apology in the newspapers within seven days and pay $5,000 as court cost. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. COVID-19 vaccinations will be rolled out as soon as Fiji receives the first batch of the AstraZeneca medicine from the World Health Organization. Fiji is part of the COVAX facility, which is committed to ensuring that poorer nations have equitable access to the vaccine. The first shipment under this initiative went out to Ghana in Africa just today. Fiji is likely to see the first shipment of the vaccines in about a month. We are hoping that within this first quarter, we will get the first batches of vaccine. I've just been talking to some of the ambassadors uh, that have begun vaccinations, and uh, the same story is they've received vaccines in batches. Uh, no particular country, you know, first world country has actually received all the vaccines that they've needed at once. The supply of 600,000 vaccines to Ghana signals the beginning of a global effort by the WHO to supply vaccines to poorer nations. Locally, authorities expect the exercise to run for up to a year. No country in the world receives all their vaccines together. So we have to accept the fact that this whole, um, you know, six months to a year will be about the vaccination. At this point in time, uh, we believe that the Ministry of Health is making the right decisions and they're doing it in very close consultation with us. The first batch will cover 15% of the population and will target frontline workers, preventing the spread of COVID-19 in Fiji. The Electoral Commission has recommended that it be made a mediator or, if necessary, an arbitrator for disputes between political parties. This was part of the Commission's submission to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights, which is considering three bills to amend Fiji's electoral framework. Sanya Nimboila reports. To me is Ms. Kavita Raniga. Chandra says any decision of the commission as mediator or arbitrator should be final and is not subject to any further appeal or review by any court, tribunal or any other body. In an election, timelines are essential and taking legal action may not fit within the expected timelines of the election. Proceedings in the court may give desired outcome, but the event may they pass its necessity. Supervisor of election Mohamed Sanim says this is crucial as it is expensive to keep evidence during the whole court proceedings. Uh, the cost of maintaining such is uh, extensive uh, and as well as the amount of the area required to house 19 containers we have to pay rental for all of that. The Commission adds this critical amendment, if adopted, will introduce dispute resolution mechanisms between political parties. Sainiani Boyla, FBC News. Coming up, traffic officers suffer verbal abuse and Nambukalo Creek cleanup this weekend. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dhadka. Welcome back. Women in villages and settlements along the Tambia Nanduri Coastal Road are capitalizing on the road being used as an alternative route to and from Lambasa. They've set up roadside souls to sell handicraft farm produce and seafood to travelers as the Fiji Roads Authority works on a new road at Korosomo along Cross Island Road. Eleanor Turangaiviu has more. Normally these women of Korotumbu village in Madhuata would be selling at the Lambasa market on a Saturday. I normally take my produce to Lambasa by bus and carry it to the market. Here I just walk out of my house into the stall to sell. With the opening up of the Tambian Anduri coastal road to vehicles as an alternative route to and from Lambasa, they have found a more effective market where they can sell every day. We just come from home, sit here and sell our brooms. We don't have to pay $1.90 to go to Lambasa and sell the brooms for $3. Here it's bought for $5. There are roughly seven villages along the Tambia and Anduri coastal road and each of these villages have roadside stalls. 
We sell fish parcel here in the morning and fresh fish in the afternoon. We just run out of fish bundles to sell. The road sales is earning these women the much needed income for their families. For me alone, I can get $35 to $40 a day. For exactly how long the route will be used is unknown, as works are still ongoing at Korosomo. We want this to be a permanent highway because our roadside sales are really good. For these women, the longer the route is being used, the better it is for them. Eleanor Turangaibio, FBC News. The Fiji Police Traffic Management Team says on many occasions their officers have been uh, victims of verbal abuse from frustrated commuters during peak hours. The Deputy Director for Traffic says these men and women spend hours in the middle of traffic come rain or shine and the last thing they deserve is to be sworn at. Dipesh Kumar reports. These officers spend at least three hours on the road every morning and afternoon trying to make sure that Fijians reach their destination as quickly as possible. From 6 o'clock and around, you get tired and when some, some people start swearing at you and if you're in a bad mood, it uh, affects your work. Eh? Close to 60 police officers are deployed every morning to monitor and manage the traffic flow between the Suvanasori corridor. Police officers also note that breakdowns and accidents are one of the major reasons causing traffic in Fiji's busiest highway. And uh, sometimes the road conditions, but we're working on that with the FRA, which is... Uh, made the drivers to drive slowly and uh, causing the uh, traffic to move uh, very slowly on our roads. Eh? Motorists are being reminded that these officers don't add to congestion. Instead, they try to ensure that travel time is shared equally among people traveling from different parts of the Suva Nosori corridor. And, uh, some people, they, when you come late and then you try to rush in and when you try to stop, then the students were not about to cross. They try to get uh, angry with you. Standing in the middle of the road, traffic police are at risk from large vehicles and have to bear with smog, dust and grime from passing for hours on end. Dipesh Kumar, FBC News. Multiple organizations are joining hands to conduct cleanup campaigns on rivers and creeks in and around the greater Suva area. Suva Suppers is taking the lead by cleaning the Nambukolo Creek on Saturday. Dipesh Kumar again. The increase in amount of rubbish in waterways in the capital has prompted this organization to take a step towards well-being of our environment. We uh, were cleaning at the Maritime Center and then we did a stand-up paddling where interested parties like kids and they could bring their parents to sort of uh, come and learn about the sport and then sort of the next month we thought we'd try Nabukolo Creek as it's part of our heritage and it's also a national uh, site for everyone over here. Suva Stand Up Pedler representative Roderick Lal says they are working with the Suva City Council and Ministry of Waterways to carry out the campaign. The initial thought we're doing will be on the water on our stand up boards. We'll pick up whatever that's on the surface and on the sides. Uh, we've been asked to also help with uh, vegetation because it's sort of grown a bit more. Fijians say they support the cleanup campaign as the Nambukolo Creek is one of the icons of Suva and it needs to be well maintained. It uh, says a lot about the place, so if uh, there's a clean-up, it would be a very good idea to keep the place clean. We as citizens, uh, we have a civil responsibility uh, and uh, polluting uh, the Nambukolo River, uh, we should know that it also has a uh, trickling impact down to the Suva Bay. So it's in the middle of uh, the city and I think it's an eyesore. If a uh, yeah, tourist happen to come and uh, the sea is polluted. The cleanup is scheduled for Saturday and people are encouraged to apply as volunteers. This is the first of many other cleanup campaigns that will be conducted this year. Dipesh Kumar, FBC News. The Pacific Blue Foundation is working on preserving the Mbenga Lagoon, the largest in Fiji at over 440 square kilometers. The organization says their work is also centered around the protection of coastal areas focusing on the sustainability of marine ecosystems. Jeshulal reports the foundation is planning advocacy on the importance of marine resources. Restoring and enhancing the structural diversity of coral reef communities is a priority for the Bengal Lagoon Initiative. One thing that we need to recognize is that these unique marine creatures are still there and there's a need for us to protect the coral reef so they will stay there. 
Project manager Stefano Kad says there is a real threat that coral reef communities will degrade and that coastal stability will continue to decline from climate change induced effects such as increased sea temperatures. Looking into uh, developing and applying nature-based solutions to threats as well as preserving some of the intact environments and habitats which are there. So coral reef, we are trying to protect the coral reef by removing crown of thorn starfish. The foundation adds they plan to continue educating coastal communities on the need to protect marine ecosystems as it is their main source of food and income as well. Jeshu Lal, FBC News. And let's join Whitney now for tonight's business. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, villagers venturing into small boat business. A new crossing to benefit people of Navosa. Stay with us. Bula, angan gonoa, milutoka, butali takanam Bula FM, bertini nambang dua NSR. Bula FM, nambang dua NSR. More villages in Kandavo are purchasing their own fiberglass boats and using them as a means to earn an income by transporting people wanting to travel around the islands. The majority of the boat owners turned to the transporting business after their farms were severely affected by tropical cyclone Yasa and Ana last month. Kelly Vadala reports. Kandavo villages depend on these small boats for everyday travel and more people have shown interest in the business over the past few months. It's a very difficult period for us here in the village, so we have to think of other ways to make money. Having to transport people and other produce on my boat is turning out to be a good business. Boat owner Eroni Sukunevalu says they earn more than enough in a day. I can earn more than $100 a day just by serving the people of Kandavu. This farmer says he works with the boat owners to help transport his produce out to other islands and the services are crucial. As a Yangona farmer, sometimes it's hard to take my produce out of the islands, but having these small boats makes it easier. It's a healthy sign that we are looking for ways to do business here on the island and contribute to our development. At Vunisea, there are more than 10 villages who own small boats and many of them plan to venture into other business fields soon. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. We now join Stenifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The U.S. dollar fell to a fresh low against the Aussie dollar and drifted near lows overnight against the pound as well as the Canadian and New Zealand dollars. The Japanese yen saw its third consecutive day of losses against the greenback. However, Japanese stocks jumped as investors cooked up shares after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell eased inflation concerns while boosting Wall Street shares. Powell told lawmakers it may take more than three years to reach the central bank's inflation goals, a sign the Fed plans to leave interest rates unchanged for a long time to come. Investors also continue to turn to the increase in trade, placing bets on increasing economic activity and promises driven by easy financial conditions, the promise of fiscal stimulus, and an accelerating COVID-19 vaccine rollout. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Yeah, the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar is pegged high against our major currencies such as the Chinese one, US greenback, PNG Kina, Euro and the Japanese yen, but was down versus the Aussie and Kiwi dollar. The commodities market was mixed today. Oil prices rose a few dollars to close at $63 a barrel. Gold dropped to close at $1,795 per ounce and silver closed up at $2,806 an ounce. Many Fijians in the highlands of Navosa will no longer have to wait for hours or days in order to cross the Matawala crossing in times of flooding. The crossing is susceptible to flooding and has hindered accessibility for most Fijians in the highlands over the past decade. 
Infrastructure Minister Chono Sumate, while visiting the site, said the crossing was washed away five times during the recent two tropical cyclones. He adds the Fiji Roads Authority has hired a contractor to build a new crossing at a higher elevation. Usumate says this is part of the government's effort in improving accessibility for Fijians in rural areas. The new crossing is expected to be completed by August this year. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you and good evening ahead in sports. NRL club to open door for Silk Tales. And league postponement impacts La Toka's preparations. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. With less than a month out from its first round Massey Cup match in Australia and the Kaiviti Silk Tales have revealed it will soon be a feeder club for an NRL team. Silk Tales chair Petro Divunideva, while speaking to Andrew Voss on the SEN radio breakfast show, did not go into specifics about the deal but says the future looks promising for Fijian Rugby League. Akula Dama with this report. The news is getting better each day for the Kaiviti Silk Tales. Actually, we've, we've got some exciting news coming up in a few weeks' time. We'll make an announcement in, in, uh, in becoming a feeder club for uh, one of our NRL teams. So this is, uh, it, it continues to evolve, and it's something that's very exciting. And um, I just can't wait to see these boys uh, experience um, rugby league here in Australia through the Ron Massey Cup. Even the Fiji National Rugby League knows the effect of the deal will be huge. There's a pathway for us there for the KBC teams. And if they get contracts to NRL or overseas club, that's like that's a big bonus. That's a big bonus for us, especially in, uh, in selecting the Fiji Party team in the 2025 World Cup. About 12 players travelled by plane for the first time when they left Fiji two weeks ago. A few funny stories of players that you know, first time leaving their village, you know, um, hopping onto a plane for the first time, um, you know, going into hotel quarantine. You know, it, it's just uh, this amazing new world for them and. Uh, that, that's what's great about this whole opportunity. It's, it's about hopefully putting them onto a, a bigger stage. Um, and the, the, the dream of this is to hopefully see a few of these players get these opportunities to hopefully excel into the NRL. Seven years of hard work behind the scene will be put to the test this season for the KVT Steel Tales. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Lautoka football coach Tangi Wonolangi says the postponement of games has a huge effect on preparations. Following the announcement of the National League being postponed for a second time this year, the Blues coach isn't too happy. Felipe Naikaso has more. The former national goalkeeper says it's worrying to note that they now have to start their season in March as opposed to early Feb. It's like uh, everything has to, its own laws. Eh? Training also has its own laws. Eh? And one of the laws is called, uh, it's called the law of reversibility. Yeah, normally they say if you, don't use it, you, if you don't use it, you lose it. So we are preparing there and then uh, it's canceled, the game is canceled. Vonolangi says while there's an extra week of training, the main issue is that teams have been preparing for a long time and they need to play. We, we might uh, be looking forward to play a friendly game this week, just to keep the momentum. And we hope to play uh, Ba or any other team. And uh, I think it will be good for the boys also. Lotoka has assembled a star-studded side with an aim of winning the league. The last time they lifted the title was just two years ago. Our new coach and uh, new place, we have been... Uh, Training very well, uh, good uh, team uh, bonding with them. Lotoka will face Navo next Sunday at Churchill Park at 3 p.m. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC Sports. The Navo futsal team has vowed to regroup and come back a much stronger side in the next round of the FGFA Futsal League Southern Zone. The Aman Sharma coach side ended their second match with a two-all draw against Tailevo Naita Siri at the FMF Gymnasium yesterday. 
This follows a 6-5 loss to Rewa in its first match. Caroline Itabi with this report. The Navua futsal team remains optimistic despite their disappointing performance in their first two matches this season. Uh, towards the end of the game, we could see a lot of our guys tiring out. Uh, we need to work on that. There were a few uh, boys were playing with a few injuries. But uh, yeah, I think we'll come out uh, well next time. And uh, just a few technical parts, I think we'll be able to end that out. Sharma says they have learned from their mistakes and they are hoping to improve their performance in the next few rounds. We were a bit disappointed because I think we could have taken the game away. Unfortunately, a few mistakes cost us the game, but I think uh, we are very optimistic to our next team and very optimistic for this league as well. For the Tailevu Naita series side, Laxity cost them the win last night. Uh, first of all, our boys uh, did very well. We started very well. Uh, and we did a silly mistake that uh, now we scored in the first five minutes. Then we struggled back and settled down and scored another two and it was not enough for the team for the win. And uh, plus our boys tried hard. Tailevu Naita Siri currently leads the points table after its two-all draw against Navua on nine points. While Nasinu is in second place after three games with six points, followed by Lami on four points. Carle Ditavi, FEC Sports. Missing his chance at the Olympic qualifiers is not the end of the road for boxer Chone Ndavule. He and Winston Hill were Olympic hopefuls. However, those dreams were shattered after they bowed out earlier last year at the Asia Oceania Tokyo Boxing Qualification event in Amman, Jordan. But he's not throwing in the towel yet. As Vinny Narakao Tonga reports, Ndavule will be a favorite at the TJ's Golden Gloves of Boxing Championship tomorrow. Returning from his call of duty, Ndavule has no time to waste as he prepares for the championship. When I reached here and I was like, the next morning I came here to the gym, start my training. As a champion, we don't give excuses, even though we have two or three days training. Like, um, as a champion, we have to work it, and no excuses. The Pacific Games silver medalist will be competing in the 64 kg category. It's really tough to balance everything, uh, job and work. As I say, it's, uh, everything it comes up to balance. And uh, you no, know, a champion like a champion does not give excuses. Boxing Fiji President Manasam Baravilala says the championship will uncover new talents. You no, know, there's going to be a, a range of boxes that's going to be uh, displaying there. They are telling out at, at the gym, and this is, uh, you know, it's a national boxing championship. So these guys are going to get, you know, their bragging rights for this year, and uh, you know, it's going to be tough. The 2020 Golden Glove National Boxing Championship will begin here tomorrow, with the weigh-in from 6 to 8 a.m., while the program proper begins at 3 p.m. Venina Rakotonga, FBC Sports. Discovering his passion for athletics, Suba Sangam student Sylvester Leweni is putting in the hard yards to make his big break in the national arena. The year 12 student joined Suba Sangam last year, hoping to showcase his talent and potentially go down in the history books as one of the fastest secondary school students. Tale Maitarikula reports. Clocking the fastest time in the 100 meters, finishing at around 11 seconds, Sylvester Leweni is labeled as a potential gold medalist. Uh, we are banking on our, on our senior boys uh, 100 meters. We have got some good results in that one. It's uh, worth it because I've trained so hard for this, uh, for this competition. I've been training from starting from this year because uh, last time it was during COVID-19. So I think I'll try my best this year. The 18-year-old competed for the first time in the Super Zone 2 last year, but his dreams of making the Fiji finals were shattered due to the pandemic. This year, the Kandavu led says he will stop at nothing to qualify for the Coca-Cola Games. I can uh, train as hard as I can to prove myself in the Coca-Cola Games and to other schools. I think I'm going to hope for the best man. Leweni finished first in the 100 and 200 meters event. He hopes to maintain the same momentum come Super Zone 2 next Thursday and Friday. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. In today's play of the day, the Silk Tails have completed their 14-day mandatory quarantine in Australia. 
But before leaving the Sofitel Wentworth Hotel, the team sang a heartfelt hymn to thank the staff of the Sydney Hotel where they spent two weeks in quarantine. From the individual room balconies, the players sang and clapped in unison, much to the delight of other guests. That's it from Sports Tonight in the World of the Weird and Wonderful later on. The phrase, uh, coffee on the go, embodied by a Jordanian man. This and more coming up. Hello here, Tawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. Facebook has pledged to invest at least $1 billion in the news industry over the next three years, only days after a high-profile standoff with the Australian government over paying news outlets for content. An active trough of low pressure to the north of Fiji is expected to drift solely south. A heavy rain alert is in effect for northern areas. In the west, mostly fine conditions prevail with mainly clear skies. From, the, uh, from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was a fairly clear day after late, rather light rain overnight. And in the north, cloudy skies with scattered showers and some heavy downpours. At sea, 15 to 20 knots at northwest winds are generating moderate to rough sea conditions. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 11.41 p.m., followed by high tide at 6.04 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.04 as well. For tomorrow, we can expect cloudy periods with some showers and isolated afternoon or evening thunderstorms over Vanuelevu, Tavuni, eastern parts and interior of Vitilevu and Kandavu. The outlook for Saturday, scattered showers and a chance of thunderstorms. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, do you think parents should monitor their children's social media use? Parents must um, cooperate more with the children uh, inside the house rather than living alone with them with the phone. I think parents can better monitor the children by having these certain apps that can help uh, sort of follow on the history of what their children search on. Parents should monitor their children by not to uh, allow them to take the phone because uh, mostly children nowadays they are using their phone by social media. It's uh, up to the parents eh, where they should give and uh, stop their, their children from uh, having uh, mobile phones. So nowadays you know they can uh, uh, quickly access into different kind of websites. Eh? So it's up to the parents. And recapping our main stories, some USP courses in doubt. Tatu Isoa ordered to pay AG for defamation and Fiji could receive COVID-19 vaccine next month. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. This week we are asking, do you believe the roadwork being undertaken is up to par? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. This one comes from an island in the Lao group, showing the dark blue ocean and the lush green vegetation from a distance. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos by email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Wadimanda. And I'm from Motoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.